This is a question that's asking us to create a full truth table for this argument. Then it asks us what property this argument has uh, and why. In order to assess the property, of course, we need the full truth table. So if we look at the argument here, there's three premises. We've got premise one, which is P arrow R or Q. We have premise two, negation Q by conditional P. And then we have the conclusion R and P. Well, this has three atomic letters, namely P, Q, and R. And I know that there's some formula that says I'll have two to the n rows. So I should have eight rows for this. So go ahead and construct your table. So it's P, Q, uh, Q R, and then we'll have a, a column for everything. I'm just sort of going to cheat and copy and paste my table now. Here's the full truth table. So I have three columns, P, Q, R, and eight rows all the way down, which represent the possible combinations. Now, remember, there is some handy trick to generate the uh, TVAs quite nicely, and that's that each letter, atomic letter, splits the uh, columns in terms of truth and false. So P becomes T, 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 F, 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 F. And then for Q, we have true, true, false, false, true, true, false, false. And then finally for R, we have true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Now, what we want to do when we just have this is we want to now uh, sort of take those truth values and push them out to the table. So I'm going to copy these and paste them. I've copied everything out. Uh, this table's not so great because OneNote doesn't give me sort of good uh, uh, border options. So I actually added a period there and a period there to try and help uh, distinguish between um, my premises and conclusion. Of course, if you're just doing this table yourself, you can mark it up in any way you want, but you just want to make sure you understand that you're dealing with uh, three separate things here, the first premise, the second premise, and the conclusion. At this point, I can start anywhere I like. It doesn't really matter as long as I'm just happy starting there. So in fact, I'm actually just going to start, uh, well, I'll just go left to right. So we're going to start with premise one. Now premise one, the main connective, which we always want to identify, is that conditional there. And so that means in order to get that conditional, I need to actually solve the disjunction. So I'm going to solve the disjunction, and the disjunction needs to look here and here. And this is where uh, I will find the values for the left disjunct and the right disjunct because it's the weakest connective. So go ahead and evaluate that now. Remember that OR is false in only one case when both sides are false. So that means that uh, because they're true, that's true, the Q is true, so that's an enough, the R is true, that's enough, here both sides are false, and that's good. In fact, whenever I see a true, I just quickly do that, and I get that evaluation. Now finally, I need to look at the conditional here, and the conditional has to point to the antecedent and the consequent. The antecedent is nice and straightforward, that's P, but what's the consequent of this conditional? It's R or Q. Always remember that truth is carried and totally conveyed of a sentence or a part of a sentence by the main connective. So the column we want to look for is the disjunction. And so we're only interested in the disjunction and the antecedent, which is P. And so here we're looking for the combination of true, false. If we see the combination of true, false, then we know that the conditional is false. So in any other case, it's good. So here it's good, 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 because they're true, true. And of course, this is the true, false case. There's the true, there's the false. Now over here, the antecedent is false for the entire uh, sort of four rows that I'm looking at. And because it's false for the entirety, uh, I know that actually the conditional is true in all cases because I'll never get the true-false combination. Okay, moving on to the second premise, negation Q by conditional P. The main connective, which we always want to identify, is not the biconditional, it is, oh, sorry, it is not the negation, it is the biconditional. So I have to evaluate the negation column first, so I'll go ahead and do that. Negation is easy because it just flips the uh, truth value, you just need to know where to look, but here the negation is only modifying the Q. So now I need to know where to look to evaluate the biconditional, and the biconditional evaluates on both sides. One side is P, the other side is negation. And the biconditional is true when both sides are the same. So here we can see the sides are different. Here we can see that the sides are the same, same, and different. So we get that for the biconditional. Lastly, we will look at the conjunction and. And is true in only one case when both sides are true. So if we ever see an F anywhere, it's just automatically false. Now, what we need to do is we actually need to find out the rows where 
all the um, all the premises are true. So in the end, I really just actually want to focus on the main connective here and the main connective here, because the main connectives are what tell us what the truth value of the premises are. So is there a row where both premises are true at the same time? Well, we just have to look down the columns that we highlighted and compare. So this is true, false, nope, true, false, nope, true, true, yes. So this row here has both premises true. That's the third TVA. Then we have false. Well, that certainly won't be it. True, true, good, true, true, good. So this one checks out. This one checks out. Uh, and then we have true, false, nope, uh, true, false, nope. So these are the three that we want to consider. So in these three TVAs, that's the third, fifth, and six, both premises are true, as you can see. The trick is to count carefully, which sometimes I don't do. So from there, we just need to compare with the column that represents the main connective of the conclusion. And the main connective of the conclusion is this and. So we would just want to look at this column here. Now, of course, we don't need to look at the entire column. All we care about are the entries in the rows or in the TVAs where I already had both premises true. And so once I see that, I, I can quickly conclude that uh, we have in the third TVA, both premises are true and the conclusion is true, which is great. But in the fifth and sixth TVA, we have both premises are true and the conclusion is false. So what property does this argument have? Well, this argument is invalid. And we can just say it's because on TVA 5, you could have said 6, you could have said both. It doesn't really matter because all we need is just one TVA. So I'm going to say on TVA 5, both premises are true and the conclusion is false. And so that is enough to justify my claim that this uh, argument is invalid. So that's how you would do a full truth table like this. Just be careful when you anal analyze the property. You have to know what property you're looking for. So for arguments, the only properties are validity and invalidity. And then you just need to focus on the main connective columns, and that will generate your solution.